This video is sponsored by Bullion.org. Hey guys, Crypt the Lazy Geek, and welcome back to the channel. And yes, guys, I finally did it. I bought the SV Boni SV220 filter. So I bought that off of Amazon. It cost me around 16,000 Japanese yen, which is 110 US dollars, something like that at the current exchange rate. It's ridiculously cheap for this filter because this is a dual band narrowband filter with seven nanometer band passes. So it's basically the same thing as the Optolong L Extreme. It passes oxygen 3 and H alpha, so you can take amazing pictures of emission nebulae from the city from very light polluted areas and it has tight band passes at the same time. And while it's doing that, it costs half the price of the Optolong L Extreme. Half the price for the same performance. Is this for real? Or is it too good to be true? Well, we'll have a look today. So yeah, a lot of you have clamored for me to test this filter. And in the box, by the way, we have another box with the actual filter here. So this is a two inch filter. There's also 1.25 inch version of that filter for cheaper. And I believe that the standard price on amazon.com, and of course I'll have links down in the description if you're interested, is around 159 US dollars. Although when I checked, there was like a $15 coupon. So it was even cheaper than that, rendering it twice as cheap, actually more than twice as cheap than the Optolongal Extreme. And in the case, there was also a little like printout of uh, a spectrum. And uh, spoiler alert, it's not the spectrum for that particular filter because of course, one of the first things I did, actually the very first thing I did after taking this filter out of the box was measure it with my own spectrophotometer, which is the Goya Lab Indigo, which I presented in a video in the past. And the reason why I do that is because I have tested so many filters that did not perform as per as per their specifications. And I'd even go further, like a couple of years ago, a filter that conformed to its specifications was the exception rather than the rule. So obviously, when I see something like this, my first thought is, which corners have been cut? Is the filter following the actual specifications in there? Or is it just a scam? Well, let's have a look at the resulting spectrograph, shall we? Okay, and here we have the spectrum that I just measured with my spectrophotometer of the ultra cheap SV220 filter. So as a reminder, on the uh, X axis, you see the wavelength in nanometers. Uh, so basically the color that passes and on the Y axis, we have its transmittance in percent, how much it passes. Now, as a reminder, with my spectrophotometer, I have some limitations. One, the light that I'm using is not good enough to give any significant results below 400 nanometers, even like for 20, something like that nanometers. So you can completely ignore this part on the left. And also it's not typically not precise enough to measure the uh, actual blocking factor outside of the band passes. So this is something that I cannot check. Although I do see a little wave here there that probably makes me think that there's a little bit of not so good blocking here in the center. But yeah, that's probably just a detail. Uh, also on the on this area here, you can see the X value and the Y value. So the Y is the percentage of transmittance with 100 being the highest. And the X value is the wavelength of where my cursor that basically red cross is located. So let's look at oxygen three. Where is the top of oxygen three? It is here. It is at 499.5 nanometers. Uh, we want uh, basically 500 point eight, seven, I don't quite remember nanometers. So this is roughly here. And that means we are at 88% transmittance, but my spectrophotometer, another limitation is that it actually undervalues, underestimates that, especially for tighter band passes. So I can expect it's actually, actually closer to like 90%, maybe even a bit more. And if we go to 501, we can see it's 86%. So yeah, it's it's decent, like actually very decent. I have seen far, far worse on more expensive uh, filters. Now let's look at the FWHM full width half max. It's supposed to be seven nanometers. I'll measure it roughly from here. So we see 496.5 nanometers to roughly 504. So that is a full width half max of 7.5 nanometers, very, very close to the promised spec of seven nanometers. I don't see any issue with that. 
let's now have a look at uh, H alpha. And uh, H alpha, uh, let's see, the center is around 656. And the actual peak of H alpha is 656.3 nanometers. That is perfectly centered. Uh, we can also go to 656.5. There we are. We're at 91%. This is underestimated. So it means that in reality, it's probably closer to 93%. That is amazing. Super well centered. It's incredible at this price. Now let's look at the full width half max. It's probably like, let's say, so 52.5, right? And we're going up to 60.5. So that is eight nanometers or if we're like a bit pessimistic, maybe 8.5 nanometers. So again, it's not quite seven nanometers, uh, but it is very close to spec and it is perfectly centered. So yeah, it's not quite seven nanometers. And also looking at the shape of those curves, the little uh, printed chart that came in the filter box is actually not the spectrometer graph of my own filter. So yes, the lie detector de determined that that was a lie, uh, but it's, it's a white lie. It is actually really, be close. And uh, last thing, let's look at 496 nanometers, which is here. That is the secondary bandpass of oxygen three, typically one third of the, the strength of the main bandpass for a lot of targets. And we can see it still passes like around 30% of that. So it will be well captured as well. This is incredible. I mean, it's not perfect, but at the price. Oh, wow. And so here we go, we've measured the filter and it performed as per specs broadly, which is incredible. Like the, the band passes are good, the band passes are well centered. And so we have a dual band narrow band filter with very narrow band passes. That's basically the equivalent of the Optolong L-Extreme for much cheaper. What's not to like? Well, we still have something to check, right? And you know what it is, it is halos on bright stars. And so obviously I needed to use this filter on my reference for halo measurement, which is the Horsehead Nebula. And this season, the Horsehead, I only have access to it for roughly one hour after astronomical dust, dusk. So I was able to actually take 14 frames of five minutes on it. And uh, before I did so, I actually was looking at the box. And if you look at the box, this is actually the Flame Nebula with the Horsehead on the side. And Alnitak is barely visible here. And Alnitak is decorated with a halo on the box itself. So I was expecting to get a halo. And yes, I did. But let's go back inside to see the actual result in PixInsights and how bad or okay the halo is. Okay, I'm back at my PC. I have PixInsight opened and we can have a look at the halo or lack thereof maybe on Alnitak. But before that, if you're doing astrophotography, you may have noticed that we use a lot of math and physics and my videos are no exceptions, even though I try to make them as simple as possible. And if you ever feel overwhelmed about all of that science and math stuff and you need a refresher, the best way to get a refresher is to use today's sponsor, Brilliant.org. And Brilliant.org, it's really like focused on math, computer science, engineering, probability, statistics, etc. And it has courses on everything and it can start from the very basics to super advanced concepts. And I personally use Brilliant like almost every day. These days, I'm actually taking a fairly advanced course about differential equations. This is something that back in university, I really struggled with and I was brilliant. I'm starting again and I'm really enthusiastic about it. And so you can as well. What I really like is that all of the lessons, they're bite-sized. They manage to make them in a way that you can interrupt yourself at any time so you can fit your lessons in a busy schedule very easily. And those lessons, they're very interactive. They really start from scratch. They explain it in a manner that is intuitive with diagrams and stuff. And you get a feel for the topic before you need to understand it in depth. And I find this really, really good. And I wish, I really wish I had had that in university. And I've mentioned like the differential equations lesson, but there's like tons of lessons, tons of topics, tons of course with progression in there. And there are new courses that are basically added every month. So if like me, you want to take advantage of Brilliant and try out Brilliant for free for a full 30 days, you should go to brilliant.org slash quivlazygeek or simply click the link in the description. Plus, you'll get 20% off Brilliant's annual premium subscription. 
But now that we are ready, let's have a look at the image. Here it is. And this is uh, basically one hour, so 14 times five minutes, so one hour, 10 minutes of data on the horse head and flame nebula with Alnitac and uh, flats and bias frames applied. And you can see there is a significant halo, but that halo is really only significant on Alnitac. Here, it's not very visible. So it does seem that only the brightest stars will be affected by such a halo. And I've also done some very quick processing on this. So this is the image after I've applied Graxpert. If anything, the halo is even more visible than before. And then after Blur Exterminator, then Noise Exterminator, and then the rotation so that we have the image as we are used to. And that's ba basically just that. And this is a simple auto stretch. There is nothing, no real processing that I've done, but we already have such a cool picture in just a bit above over one hour from Tokyo. And the only problem that I see with this filter is something that I really don't care about personally. It's this halo there. But of course, how much you care about it, that is up to you. So yeah. Pretty impressive. And with that, we are done with this uh, filter. It's honestly, I think it is great performance for the price. Yes, there is a halo, but again, we're using it on like Alnitac, which is like the torture test when it comes to halos. Now, you know me, I don't mind halos. I'm fine with them. They're perfectly okay. But if you don't like halos, then maybe this filter is not for you. And you might go for more expensive alternatives. That said, as I recall, the L Extreme is not halo free either. And it is still twice the price. So if you're thinking about like, buying a filter and you want H alpha oxygen three, just like this one, and you hate halos, then maybe the Ascar D1, which I featured on the channel before, would be the right filter for you because it did not have any halo and it fulfilled its specifications. There's also the Altair 4 nanometer version, but that's much more expensive. I also featured it in the channel. I'll have links down below to everything. But I think that's like the choices that my mind wanders, wanders to when I think about that. What about if you don't mind halos that much? What should you buy? this? I mean, what else? Uh, I mean, the L Extreme is more expensive. There's the Ascar C1 that's cheaper, but it's not a narrow band filter per se. It's a dual band filter, but the band passes are not as narrow as this. So this is much better for light plus areas. The Ascar D1 doesn't have halo, but it's far more expensive. Uh, there's some stuff from Altair. I don't remember the price of their like six nanometer filters, dual band. I don't quite recall, but it's probably much more expensive than this. I mean, I did not, I, you know, I bought this filter and in my mind, I was going to measure it in my spectrophotometer, show that it was terrible, not up to spec, and just like, you know, say it's horrible, but it's not, absolutely not. It, it's great at this price, incredible. I got it for $110. I'm, I'm almost disgusted, so that's it. That's it. It's a great filter and super cheap. Get it. <laughs> and that's it. Let me know what you think about this in the comments, please, because I want to, I want to know, I want to know. And you know, like the video, subscribe as well. This truly helps the channel like get more popular and my videos reach more people. So your assistance is much appreciated. And also if you want to support me and you're planning on buying anything at like Amazon or Agena or High Point Scientific, you can go in the description, click on any of my affiliate links and then buy whatever you need. It's at no cost to you, but it truly helps me out. If you want to be even more proactive about helping me, you can join the channel as a member next to the subscribe button or join my Patreon and some ranks of my Patreons have access to my videos early and without ads. But more important than all of that, don't forget whenever you can to look up at the stars, and I'll see you next time.